My father died. They said it was an accident. But I know better. He was murdered. Murdered by someone who wanted to keep him silent. Today is the day of vengeance. I will find my father's killer. Or I am not the pox upon movies everywhere known simply as Seth Rogen. But tonight, you can call me the Green Hornet. Hello, I'm Speculative Dude. Welcome to Movies That Should Have Known Better. A curious look at movies that really should have known better. Hello, I'm Speculative Dude, and welcome to yet another edition of Movies That Should Have Known Better. Today we're taking a look at the movie Green Hornet, starring Seth Rogen and Jay Cho. And I gotta tell you, I was a huge fan, I still am a huge fan of Bruce Lee. He, so looking back at the original Green Hornet, I thought it was pretty much just the coolest thing in the world, especially at that time. So when I heard there were going to be a remake, naturally I was a little apprehensive. But initially Kevin Smith was going to be doing it, and I thought, hey, here's a guy who has a lot of respect for comic books and history is in comic books. Okay, this sounds good. Now, there are many reasons, for many reasons, why Kevin Smith eventually dropped the project, or was dropped from the project. I'll let you guys be the judge on that one. But, one way or another, it fell somehow into the hands of Seth Rogen. I couldn't tell you how disappointed I was when I heard that. It, first of all, I don't know about any history between Seth Rogen and comic books, but I know about Seth Rogen in movies. And I have yet to be impressed by anything he's done. The closest thing I thought to him actually being funny was as the cop in Superbad. Now, when I heard that they were casting Jay Cho, a uh, Chinese, uh, actually a Chinese singer, as in the role of Kato, played by Bruce Lee, I was also a bit apprehensive. Now. I have to admit, he did do better than I expected. And, and he has, and I found out later, that he actually does have a lot, several movie credits to his, or movie titles to his credit in China. Uh, this is just his first American film. And, as I said, it, he actually did a decent job. Um, the movie will start out with, uh, starts out with uh, Seth Rogen's character as a young man, as, as probably maybe 10 years old saying that he got into a fight, and actually lost the fight, uh, trying to help a little girl. Well, his father gets mad at him, oddly enough. Not for getting into a fight, but for losing the fight. And that really, honestly sucks. Uh, that's kind of a stupid way to end it. And I later on they try and make the point that he needs to try his best and to, to succeed in everything he does, but when you see his character growing up, or what he has grown up to become, he's actually a massive loser who pretty much just lives off his father's wealth. His father is a very wealthy newspaper, newsman. Um, you know, I couldn't tell you how, how, how disappointed I was when, especially when, as the movie starts to go along, and you find out that he has basically grown up with no sense of justice whatsoever. When he starts out this, the Green Hornet character, it's to deface a statue of his father because his father's kind of a dick. <sighs> wow. I'm not, not uh, sure I can appreciate the ir irony of the characters here. Now, <sighs> first thing we can look at, one thing I should say we, that we can look at, at is, uh, is how, how does he become the, the Green Hornet? Any good superhero needs a good reason for why they do it. I mean, nobody just picks up a cape and cowl one day and says, I'm going to do justice. Uh, and Superman was taught from a very young age, brought up by a very uh, moral, if you will, and uh, upstanding family to believe in truth, justice in the American way. And, you know, so he feels very motivated to, to portray that in his heroism. Plus, he has powers and he chose to use them responsibly. Batman was motivated by his parents' death, um, and in a way, likewise, uh, the Green Hornet is motivated by his father's death. 
you find out towards the very end that his father was murdered and, uh, by what appears to be an allergic bee sting. And of course, you find out later it was actually it was all a setup. You know, he was uh, he basically he did have the allergic reaction, but someone basically used mm, the equivalent of a blow dart to the neck to inject the the venom from the bee sting. Now, another thing that a lot of people will will ask, you know, why is this, uh, you know, why are you so upset at this? I mean, yeah, there are some pl minor plot points, but, you know, it's still a superhero movie, and superhero movies of late don't exactly have the best reputation of, uh, at least of representing the origins very well, and that is true. The problem I have with it is that I don't see Seth Rogen as having any redeemable character, any redeeming, you know, character features here. Um, his father was a dick. Uh, when his father dies, he's, uh, he goes out with Cato, uh, who is basically a member of the family, the house staff. Um, uh, now, granted, I know that's not that far off from Cato in the original, but uh, here. Honestly, it felt more racist, honestly. And you're going to have to see the movie to understand what I mean, but you look at everybody in this movie, and it really doesn't come off as a uh, well-rounded household, to say the least. I think just about everybody who works there is Asian. Uh, and that's, you know, that kind of bugs me. But... Uh, in fact, even uh, J. Cho, he's, J. Cho apparently has been working, Kato has been working for this family for a number of years. They don't really say how long, I don't believe, but uh, a number of years. You know, he's been his father's uh, driver, you know. Uh, he becomes Seth Rogen's best friend, uh, you know. In fact, one day he even asks, he goes, what did you think of my father? And, uh, you know, he's kind of reluctant to say anything at first. He goes, no, seriously, he goes, what, he goes, I'm not going to get mad at you, I'm not going to fire you, what, uh, you know, what, what did you really think of my father? He says, he was, he was kind of a dick, is, is, is his response. And, you know, it's like, and that, of course, makes uh, Seth Rogen like him even more, because that's, that's his opinion of his own father. It's, he thought his own father was a dick. Uh, <laughs> so their first outing, and, or mission, or whatever you want to call it, together, is to go and deface a statue that the town has erected in his father's memory. His father was a very influential man, and uh, they, they set up this little, this little statue, you know, in honor of him. Uh, you find out later his father wasn't quite as respectable as everybody thought he was, but, but uh, no one knew that at the time. Seth just knew how he was at home and decides that he and Cato are going to go and cut the head off this little bronze statue just for, you know, to amuse themselves. Well, while they're out, they happen to come across someone getting mugged. And, uh, Seth sort of tries to stop him. Cato ends up actually stopping him. And somehow someone gets a picture of this and sends it to the newspaper, which is now being run by Seth Rogen. Well, his father died. I guess it is the family business, so that does make, kind of make sense. Uh, he decides that he needs, uh, that they need some motivation for this character, er, and, uh, so enter the motivation on um, Cameron Diaz. It's pretty good motivation. Now, apparently she got, uh, she graduated from med, uh, from law school, and, uh, also with a degree in psychology, it seems like, because she's very analytical about what she sees in these, these characters, who uh, they at first they simply refer to the green, you know, the man with the green mask and, and the man with the black mask. Um, well, uh, she's as she's looking at these characters, she's she makes a hilarious, uh, very uh, hilarious observation that the man in the green mask is clearly in charge, and that the black the guy in the black mask is just uh, you know following orders, uh, you know. Even though, uh, and actually throughout the movie, she keeps making references to the guy in the green mask as, as the one in charge, even though despite the fact that Cato is clearly the one who does all the fighting. Uh, in fact, they even get into a fight later on about it, which 
in and of itself is very funny, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, she keeps making these observations about it, and in a way, uh, well, first of all, Seth Rogen will hit, hit on anything female in this movie. That's his character. He, he thinks he's a ladies' man, but he's not. Uh, like, he keeps hitting on Cameron Diaz, who actually likes Cato, amusingly enough. You know, just, you know, she thinks Cato's a good guy. And he actually does, uh, when they're not doing the Greenhorn thing, he actually does kind of pal around with Cato. And, uh, and, uh, they, they are, you know, there is, there is a good dynamic of them being friends. I, uh, you know, they get into their buddy fight later, you know, there's always one of those in, in, in any buddy movie. Uh, but yeah, they, t they actually do, you know, kind of treat each other like real friends more than, uh, more than say, uh, you know, you know, a guy in his driver or butler or however you want to put it. But, uh, uh, <laughs> they, uh, he, to make all of her analyses come true, he has her look over these papers that they have on this character who they decide to call the Green Hornet, uh, and somehow she analyzes that despite the fact that he beat up a guy mugging someone, somehow he's actually a criminal himself because of the, the vandalism to the statue. And somehow she deduces from all of this that, well, he's going to be taking out other criminals so he can build his own empire. That is a hell of a jump from vandalism to criminal mastermind. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, I mentioned the uh, buddy fight later, and honestly, this one comes from a couple of points. Throughout the movie, it's evident that Seth Rogen knows nothing, or little, if anything, about fighting. Uh, you know, there's a part where they're kind of, where he kind of says, well, did you see I kicked that guy when he was down on the ground? Um, it's like, yeah. I mean, and that's, I mean, granted, that's the point of his character. His character isn't very good. Now, uh, that becomes evident, uh, however, he is jealous of Cato's ability, and that becomes more evident when Cato decides to try and do something nice for him. Cato is a very crafty kind of guy. He, he's very good with his hands. He builds stuff. He built their car. You know, he put all these weapons and cool stuff in the car. It was amazing. I think it, that's the, the, I'll tell you, that car was the best part of this movie, by far. Um, but, uh, when, uh, when Cato fights, it's like he goes, a lot of people didn't like this, I actually did like this, it's like he goes into this zone where he, he can react, he reacts very fast, he can see what's going to happen and he reacts very quickly to it, and that's what it tries to show. Um, I think a lot of people misunderstand happens and thinks that time is actually slowing down, and it's, no, it's not that, it's that he's analyzing everything very quickly and reacting very fast to it. Um, but putting that aside, it, uh, one thing that uh, becomes evident is he gives, uh, is that Seth Rogen is in fact jealous of Cato's skill, uh, and, think, and when he thinks that Cato's looking down on him, he gets pissed. Uh, uh, Cato gives him this gas gun, uh, which is basically because Seth Rogen has no other way to defend himself. He can't fight worth Jack. Uh, you know, he thinks he's doing him this nice friend, this nice favor, and he's and he's like, "Oh, that's cool. Do you get one too?" He's like, "No." He tries to pretend like, "Oh, you know, I'll make one for myself later," just you know, because he doesn't really need it. And he's like, "What? You think you don't need it?" And all of a sudden, uh, Seth Rogen gets very headstrong, out of you know, kind of out of nowhere. And uh, granted, he's always been this way, he's always had a high opinion of himself, but here it really comes to a head, in that they actually have a fight with each other right, you know, there. And unlike these fights against these street thugs, Cato and Seth Rory go back and forth. They can, you know, you know, they, you know, he gives as good as he takes in this one. Also, you know, he, you know, there's a time where he, like, basically jumps through, you know, this... Uh, window and you know tackles him, throws him across the room, and and uh, you know Cato's fighting him, but it's Cato's not fighting him the same way he fights the other guys, and they of course they end up going their own way, and uh, you know they end up getting back together later or as buddies when they realize they need to take out this this uh, guy Bloodnovsky. Mm. That's 
possibly the least intimidating criminal mastermind name I've ever heard. I mean, and we're talking about something that sounds even less intimidating than Kingpin. While the Kingpin's an intimidating character, he doesn't have, may not have the best of names, it's still better than Blunovsky. <sighs> at the you know, at the very end, uh, Seth Rogen actually gets shot, and they have to come to Cameron Diaz for help. He uh, uh, they decide that they need to keep uh, the ending is actually kind of amusing because they decide they need to try and keep the identity of the Green Hornet, who everyone still thinks is a criminal, uh, a secret. So they make it look as if Cato drives up on orders from the Green Hornet and shoots Seth Rogen during a press conference, revealing the bullet wound. That way he can go safely to the hospital without revealing his identity. And that's mildly clever. Uh, it's, you know, there are, I get, I'm not going to lie, there are some decent elements in here, but one of the biggest problems is that Seth Rogen keeps trying to inject his own brand of humor into this movie, into a movie that really should have little, if any, humor in it. Now, I know it, what a lot of people think. This is a comic book movie. Shouldn't it have, you know, be kind of cheesy in a... Yes, but cheesy doesn't mean it has to have bad lines. Uh, a character who's nothing but a horn dog. I mean, all Seth Rogen wants to do the whole time is try and get with Cameron Diaz, and that doesn't work. She doesn't want any of him. It just... It comes off as so unappealing. Um, there is one moment that two moments that I really do like. Uh, uh, Seth, uh, the, through the entire movie, Seth Rogen has been trying to analyze how Cato fights. You know, and he even asks, you know, what what is it? What is it that it that you do when you fight? How do you do that? And he tells me, he's like, you know, I go into the zone. I can see what's happening and I react. And, uh, you know, and it shows that Cato can react very quickly. Seth does try to do that towards the end. He, uh, he tries to, you know, there's a moment where someone's telling him these details about the, his father's death. And he sits there, and it does, in fact, look like he's gone into this zone, like he's thinking very quickly and adding up all the details. And then the man says... Okay, judging by that blank expression you've had on your face for the past five minutes, I'd say you've, you've finally worked it out. And so, yeah, you realize he's been sitting there going... the whole time, you know, for, for more than a few seconds. Then later, when, they're, when they are in the big fight, he actually finally does figure it out and actually is able to do something similar to what Cato does. It's, uh, not with martial arts necessarily, but at least his movements, he sees what's happening, you know, he sees the gun here, you know, move slightly over, you know, you know, guy coming through the door, twist this way to avoid getting hit by the door and grab the guy as he's coming out, okay, so things like that, and that actually does come off as decent that he does learn throughout, you know, finally at the end of the movie. Um, overall, though, I'd really have to give this movie no better than a four. Uh, while J. Cho does a good job as Kato, um, Seth Rogen does such a horrendous job as the Green Hornet. It's, you know, any fan, I think any fan of the comic book should be quite embarrassed by this movie. I mean, this feels like it d belonged back in the 90s when comic book movies were on the that bad downward spiral where, you know, people thought that, oh my gosh, no one should ever make another comic book movie. This really belonged back then. It's that bad. Um... And I'm giving it a four is actually probably generous. Uh, it just the everything feels forced. Nothing feels natural about it. Uh, I said Seth Rogen trying to inject his humor fails miserably. You know, not only was he, you know, I mean, he was the executive producer even on this movie, so he, you know, he fronted money to get this done. You know, it's it, it's he did it. The whole thing was a miserable failure. They really should have known better. Uh, but, no, somebody thought that this was a good idea. And somebody went to see it in the theaters. Somebody watched it fail. I'm speculative, dude. From me to you, let's go watch some decent movies.